We're going to be looking at the last 14 years of what we believe is the last 14 years till Jesus Christ comes back. And we believe that that would be in 2029. And and uh, the reason that we look at 14 years is for two reasons. Because there were significant, pivotal things happening in the heavens. We know by Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, that the sun, the moon, and the stars are there for signs, for appointed times, for days, and for years. So we have not been taught to look at the heavens, but all of our ancient brothers and sisters absolutely knew the heavens. That's how they kept time. All of them, not just Christians. And secondly, we're we are convinced that this is the last 14 years that we've been in because of the numbers and the dates that the Bible itself gives us. Um, Daniel, the prophet Daniel, was given dates and times. And Jesus talks about uh, knowing the times so that he doesn't come upon you like a thief in the night. And so does Paul. He says the same thing. The Bible is about numbers and it is about dates and is it about it is about times and it's all throughout the bible and the 14 years doesn't come in only because of the signs in the heavens but it comes in also because of the the mirror image of the seven years of famine and seven years of plenty in the old testament what we have to realize is that the Bible is a repeating pattern over and over and over of the basically the same exact pattern repeating itself. That's what Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 says. The thing that hath been, it is which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9, King James Bible. I'll give you an example in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and at the end, God creates a new heaven and a new earth. And this is just a repeating pattern. So we are going to show you guys the significance of this last 14 years, which we are right in the middle of, 2022, and how all of the numbers are connecting in ways that were revealed to me a few days ago that I never ever saw until it was revealed to me and um, it's all all has to do with significant numbers that mark uh times and events and everything in the bible we're getting numbers that every single number that we get makes sense and has to do with everything about the last days so there we are we're going to try to explain it the best of way that we can and there's so much information that you know, and it just keeps coming um, that it's going to be an adventure. So we're going to give it our best. And then, Junior, and Junior, I would like uh, for the people to look at a one minute clip of this number that we're going to be talking about. That is a very pivotal number, which is the thirty seven seventy three. So I'm going to play a minute clip. Then we're going to show the board and then you're going to take it home. So here we go called God's Grand Design. This number 37 will be explained to you. This is nothing we copied from other people like Junior explained. I had a hunch on this number. It did break up some things. It showed me some information. But with the help of Junior, I'll be quite frank with you guys. I got to gotta give credit where it's due to God's glory. The man tore it up. And uh, I knew that there was something there and uh i tried to look at it i looked at it gave me two three areas where to look but then i was fighting it and when one night i put myself down on the couch and i said lord i need to know i know there's something huge here and uh, he said call uh, call junior and the rest is history. So we're going to show you this one minute clip. I'm going to put a board up on the TV and then Junior will be taking it away. Here we go. Genesis 1 1 in Hebrew has seven words. Seven is a prime number. There are seven letters in these two words and seven letters in these two words. 
There is a mid word and three words to the right and three words to the left. This word has three letters and this word has three letters. The numeric value of all the words is 2,701, which is 37 times 73. 37 and 73 are prime numbers. 3 and 7 and 37 and 73 show up frequently in the underlying numeric patterns in the Bible, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, in the Hebrew text and in the Greek, and three words to the right and three words to the left. This word has three letters and this word has three letters. The numeric value of all the words is 2,701. Right there. In the beginning, the first sentence in the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth has a numerical value of 2,701. So we're going to be dealing with this number 3773. And we're going to go with the board and Junior is going to teach it. So I've got a chart here and we've got basically 14 years symbolized right here. We have from 2015, which is... Now, now, Jerry, I'm going to need you because let's explain to the I'm audience here. the significance of these five dates. We have five dates starting in 2015, going all the way down to 2029, which represents the last 14 years, just like the 14 years of Joseph when there was seven years of famine at the end and there were seven years of plenty at the beginning. So tell us a little bit about 2015, what happened there, uh, which would be the beginning of this 14. Years. What in, happened in those years? In 2015, there were a blood moon tetrads, 14 and 15. A tetrad is a phenomenon where four consecutive eclipse seasons each contain a total solar eclipse. They were very rare. On that day, and I got another board to show that, was September 28th, 2015. Something real unusual happened that day. It was a Shemitah, which is a seven-year period. It was a blood moon. And two cows got born, and they called them the Shemitah cows. They're recorded. You can Google them. And these cows had two numbers on them, one with a big seven and one with a little, little seven. Got my attention, Junior. And I started to look at this a couple, three years ago. And then not only that, I looked at the same day on September 28, 2015, Barack Obama and the Pope got together at the United Nations and started this program called Agenda 30. 2030. 2030. I'm so sorry. Agenda 2030. Yes, yes. And it just got my attention. I said, what's going on here? Well, as time went on, I understood that it was a Shemitah, which was a very big thing. And if you look at this board, if you look at the top, it says 37 times 73 equals 2,701. The numerical value of in the beginning created God, the heavens and the earth just so happens to be 2,701. Then I understood that 37 and 73 equals 110. And 110 is the 110th Psalm where David wrote, the Lord said at my right side and told that I'll make my enemies a footstool. Well, that's funny because in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and then now you got this. And now you're looking at Joseph beginning his ministry at 30, just like Jesus, ruled for 80, equaling 110, which is 37 times, uh, 37 plus 73. It got my curiosity. And then I showed Junior this. And now, Junior, would you explain what that 3773 is today? How did that, how do we come up with all of this? Right, so Jerry told me that he could not get 3773 out of his mind. He knew it had something to do 
with this last uh, stretch that we're in, the last 14 years here. So he gave it to me a few days ago, and I sat. And it didn't take me but a second. I go, Jerry, I said, you know, uh, 37, 73. Well, I don't know about the 73 yet, but the 37 is 2017. And Jerry, tell him now how we get that is 20 plus 17. And 2017 is 30, 37. So I said, well, you know, we know that 2017 is very, very popular uh, these days because of the Revelation chapter 12 sign, which is the woman giving birth in the, in the heaven. It's a constellation that the Bible speaks about in Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, King James Bible. And we know that these things are signs. In Genesis 1, 14, that's what they're there for, the sun, the moon, the stars. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Seasons also means appointed times. Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, King James Bible. So I said, Jerry, I said, 2017 adds up to 37. And he said, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you're getting me. You got me going here. So I said, Yeah, but I, I don't know about the 73. So I hung up. Half an hour later, I go, well, just read it backwards because Hebrew reads right to left. So if you read it right, left to right, you got 37 and you read it right to left, you got 73. Called him back and he's like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So you then blew my mind, you blew my mind, Junior. Yeah, I blew my mind. So then later on, amongst all kinds of other revelations that I got in between later on, I said, Jerry, he told me the the. He told me what 3773 equals when you multiply it together. 37 times 73. He said 2701. And I'm sitting here and it dawns on me. I said, wait, 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 what? I said, say that number again, 2701. I says, okay, we know 3773 is 2017 front and back. Then he said 2701. I said, my gosh, Jerry, look at the numbers. 2017 is 2701 just take the seven and put it in front of the two and you have 2701 i go oh my gosh so 3773 is 2017 and it is also 2701 which is 37 times 73 which is the numerical value for the very first verse in the bible how why does this make all kinds of sense? Because in Isaiah 46.10, the Bible says that God declares the end, which we're at, from the beginning, which you couldn't get any more beginning than that. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10, King James Bible. 2017 was a 12-year warning, and you're going to get into all of that. So this is starting to come alive. I know there was two great signs, which I'll show on the next board after Junior is done saying what he's got to say with this. And the two significant things that happened was on August 21st, the Great Totality Eclipse, which the, the eclipse started in Salem, Oregon, and went to seven Salems across America to South Carolina, and it also went to Jerusalem at the same time. Now, by the way, an eclipse is always assigned to a Gentile nation, but then when the blood moon popped up 33 days later on September 27th, or September 23rd, 2017, which was another peace day, now it's a signal to Israel with the Revelation 12 sign. So they're all revolving 12, Junior. 2017 is massive. Now let me show you why another reason 2017 is massive and the numbers is because every Hebrew, every Hebrew number has a meaning to it. It means something. 
And in Hebrew, the number three means divine order. Divine order because there are three that are one in the Godhead, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. First John 5, 7. So that's the number three. And the number seven stands for divine completion. So we have divine order and divine completion on 3773. And that is marked at 2017 where it all is the same. All connects right there. So like Jerry said, there was signs in the heavens that were warnings. See on my chart here, I have 14 total. But if you start from 2017, which is another pattern, we have the last 12 within the 14 that make a whole bunch of sense also. So then our next pivotal year is 2022. And 2022 is, uh, there's all kinds of things to do with 2022. It is the 11th Shemitah. It is right in the middle of the sevens. And to th let me remind you guys, going back, 2015, the start of the 14 is the 10th Shemitah. A Shemitah is a seven-year cycle, and it is the 10th one. Uh, 2022 is the 11th Shemitah. And then 2029 is the 12th Shemitah, and that is the end right there. And in the middle of 2022 and 2029, we have 2024. Why don't you tell them what happens in 2024, why that is such a major year, Jerry? Okay, we'll show it to you guys. The totality eclipse that kicked off in 2017 that I just mentioned was on August 21st, which was on the day of Elul, and it crossed America from one end to the other. But then there's another one returning on April the 8th. You can Google all of this, 2024, and it's making an X over America. And I could never put this 2024 in the equation in all the stuff that I've, that I've been uh, learning and studying and been asking God, and I got nothing out of the 2024 until Junior rocked my world. Go ahead, Junior. I just wanted to make it clear why 2024 is on the map. Um, so then we have 2029, the next pivotal year, and 2029, Jerry, I think you got a lot to say about that year, don't you? Why It's the end, right? Why don't you tell us a little bit about that year? Okay. Well, uh, there's so much, right? Okay, here I go real fast. I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep this as limited as I can. There's so much, guys. That I do. We know, we know that all the 29 scriptures, the Isaiah 29, he returns as the lion. Jeremiah 29, 11, and even the beginning of 29, where he knows the plans that he has for his people. And you look at 29, when the disciples asked him in Matthew 24, at, and he said, no one stone shall stand on another. He went and sat down at the Mount of Olives, which we know he'll return there. And then you see that, they came to him privately and said, tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming? And what shall be the end of the age? Now, we know he's a priest and a, and a, and a king that was rejected, but he's also a prophet. So he's talking all about Matthew 24. But isn't it ironic that when he gets to chapter, or, or I mean, verse 29, it says immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun and the moon will go dark. Gary, look at my chart. Look at my hand. Look at this. I got to show you something. Go. You see where my finger is? Yeah. What chapter was Matthew? 24. And what is the verse that he comes back? 29. 24, 29. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So just look at this. So now... It says that the, that the heavens were shaken. And then we know that there's going to be something happening on Friday, April the 13th, 2029. And that will be this great comet. You can Google it. And it's also found in Revelation verse 8, where it talks about Wormwood five months before the return. And also that God 
told them about a day which was called Elul 29. And Elul means repent. Well, that's strange. Elul 29 and 2 plus 9 is 11, which is, again, chaos. And these 29s just don't quit. So, yeah, that's just a fraction. Look at what Amos tells us. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Right there. This was just given to us. To me. The Holy Spirit. I'm writing this board. Actually, Junior mentioned it. Go up a little higher. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord does nothing without revealing his plans to his prophets, the servants. Wait a minute. Did we not get this by revelation, Junior? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So if you look at this number, Amos 3, verse 7. So from left to right, it's 37. But from right to left, it's 73. By the revelation <laughs> of the Lord and by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. How mind-blowing is that? That 3773 yes, is showing a revelation of 3773 becoming 2017. And given a 12-year warning with two major signs in the heavenly, says the heavens declare the glory of God, according to Psalms 19.1. And then Proverbs 25.2 quotes what? Junior? It is, the, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but is, it is the honor of kings to search a matter out. So it's not like he doesn't want us to know. He will reveal his deep truths, his revelation truths to his people. We know that in Matthew 24, verse 32 to 36, he cursed the first fig tree before he came into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. But in Matthew 24, 32 to 36, he's talking about another fig tree. He said, learn the parable of the fig tree. When you see it, what? Bring forth leaves, meaning coming back. In other words, he cursed Jerusalem, the first tree. But there'll be another one. And he said, this generation shall not pass. Well, now I get it. It's 12 Shemitahs. Since Israel became a nation in 1948-49. So to get to the 10th one was 2015. September 28th, 2015 was a blood moon and a warning to Israel. Because it was a 14-year warning because this is all going back to who? It's going back to Joseph, a type and shadow of Christ. And what did he do? He interpreted a dream. And in that dream was a seven year of plenty with the cows and the seven year of famine. Well, wait a minute. Did not two cows get born in 2015 on the September Shemitah? Did not Barack Obama do an agenda 2030? On a blood moon. And then we got 2022, which will go into the 11th Shemitah, which will be September 27, 2022. And then the 12th Shemitah will be the 2029, the second coming of the Lord, Revelation 19:11. But now watch this. In September 28, 2015, was a warning, a 14 year warning. In August 21st, 2017, it was the great totality eclipse, a warning to the world. But in September 27, 2022, it's the Feast of Trumpets, the 11th Shemitah. And what is that telling us? Well, 11 always represents chaos. 11 represents uh, uh, judgment. 11th always remember that it's troubling times. And it is a 12-year warning. It's wake-up time. When you look at all these things and you start to understand, so now how I look at this, I look at pattern making prophecy. In Genesis 10, we have a divided nation in verse 3, 4, and 5. In Genesis 11, we have Nimrod creating a new world order, building the Tower of Babel. And they were doing things that were way beyond their technology because God himself said, let us go down and confuse their language. 
and eleven is chaos, and that's coming up now on September twenty seventh, twenty twenty two, because the feast of trumpets, and a shemitah can't kick off until the Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year, which is one day before Elul twenty nine. Now, when you look at the tenth chapter, it's a divided nation. The eleventh chapter, it's a new world order, which you're seeing happening right now. And then in Genesis 12, something ironically happens. God chooses a man named who? Abram. And he gives him a land and gives him 12 tribes to govern the kingdom of God. Wait a minute. That's telling me at the second coming in 2029, this is how it's all lining up. And it's a warning and it's a signal to Israel since 1949. And he said, this generation shall not pass. And a generation is 70 to 80. Now, check this out. If that's the case, then they fly away. Well, 80 and 49 is 2029. Back it up, 7 is 2022. But do you know that we're the 73rd year right now? And 73 and 1949 equals... 2022 guys this is not just something me or junior could make up will you agree junior uh i absolutely could not make this up never happened junior go ahead so yeah if you need my help junior just rock with your numbers i know you got a lot of a lot of material all right so jerry showed us that um just right now that Jesus made the prophecy of the final generation, the fig tree generation, being 70 to 80 years, because 70 to 80 years is uh, considered a generation. So at 80 years, we would land on from 1949, which was the inception of Israel, to 2029. And all the scriptures that land on 29, um, talking about the return of Jesus Christ. So that's one, that's how we are coming to this. Also, we are coming to this date because, Jerry, tell them a little bit about the Jubilees, the 40 Jubilees. How about the 40, huh, Jerry? From uh, Jesus? Number 40. Well, you know, it goes back to Genesis 6 3 when he talked about 120, which I believe it's 120 Jubilees. God, he will, he, his spirit will not contend with man at the flood. And that was the 120. But we know that Jesus came and died at the 80th Jubilee. That literally means 40. What is a Jubilee, Jerry? What is a Jubilee? It's a 50-year celebration. It's called the year of uh, the, the, the year of release. All debts are canceled. It's a picture of Jesus also dying on the cross and forgiving all their sins. So Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, which is 18, which is 666, the number of man. Genesis 6, 3, God makes a prophecy and he says, my spirit shall not always strive with men for his day shall be 120 years. So he was actually talking about 120, 50 year cycles, Jubilees. So, which is 6,000 years. Am I correct? 100%. There we go. So that 120 seems to be running out at 2029, right? 100%. Or, or, or 2022. One of the two, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so it looks like this 120 Jubilee cycle, uh, this 6,000 year period, in other words, 120 times 50 is 6,000, is going to run out. Time is up for the last Jubilee in either, most likely this year, 2022, which is also coincidentally, not coincident, but, you know, happens to be when the Daniel 70th week is scheduled to start. Amen, I mean, how amazing, right? How amazing is that? This 120 running out right when we're starting Daniel 70th week. That's kind of convenient, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and on 927, Junior explained the 927, which is September 27th. So September 27th is when the new year starts in Hebrew. So 927, uh, on our calendar is actually 727 on their calendar. But uh, 927 happens to add up to 18. 927. 
And 18 is the number of man, 666. And that's very interesting because the Antichrist is a man uh, inhabited by Satan. And um, it says that he is called the man of sin. So Daniel 9.27 talks about the Antichrist being revealed. And it so happens to fall on September 27th when this uh, Daniel 70th week is kicking off. So. 9 27 daniel chapter 9 verse 27 and september 9 27 2022 sure are matching up aren't they jerry and he confirmed the covenant for how long for one week which would take us to 2029 oh my god thank you lord <laughs> too much and nine and two is 11 which is judgment and chaos and 11 is the 11th horn and 11 is the eleventh horn, the little horn that comes out of out of the ten horns? Check this out, Trini, out of the ten. So out of the divided nation will come one that will bring him into one nation. Look how perfect this is, Junior. And the eleventh is Nimrod, and eleventh is chaos. And we won't even go with all the elevens tonight, but believe you me, they're there. They're there. We ain't uh -huh. got enough time to I could be on the phone for two hours just showing you stuff about the eleven. But yeah, it's all there. And there's even stories about the twelve. But it's all pointing out to 2015, 17, 22, 24, and 29. All in 3773. Now, Junior is going to blow your guys' mind with this because uh, he didn't even kick off with his numbers yet, but he will. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, another thing about 11, Jerry, is that's one and one. One plus one is two. The meaning of two in Hebrew is a, is division and a double witness. That's kind of interesting. Division and look at what they're doing. They're dividing God's land over there. Isn't that amazing? Yep. Absolutely. So I guess we should get into some of the numbers that I, I see some patterns. What we're looking at here, guys, is patterns for this last 14 years that are quite amazing to me. Because they all make sense. Not one of them that I do doesn't make any sense. They all make sense. So right here, you'll see on the top, you'll see on the top of uh, 2022 a 10, because that is representing the 10th Shemitah cycle, which is a seven-year cycle. So that would be a 70. Uh, so and then and then you see an 11 on the 2022, because that is the 11th seven-year cycle, and a 12 on 2029, because that's the 12th year cycle. Uh, 12 Shemitah cycle. Okay, so when you add these numbers up, 10, 11, and 12, the last three Shemitahs, you get an interesting number at the 12 Shemitah. What number do you get? 33. 33. And we know that Jesus Christ was 33. So when's he supposed to come back? 2029. What do you get on 2029? Number 23, uh, 33, if you had the last three Shemitahs in the 14 years. Kind of interesting to me. So what about if we multiply then 10 times 11 times 12? Uh, so the last three Shemitahs, we got 10, 11, and 12 here. If you add it up, it's 33. Now, if you multiply them, the number that you get, if you want to do it yourself, is 1320 if they're multiplied. Well, you know what the interesting thing to me about 1320 is? If you take 13 and add it to 20, what number do you get? You get another. 33. <laughs> yeah, so that's interesting. The last 10th, 11th, and 12th Shemitah both give you 33s if you add them and you multiply them. And we know that Jesus is 33. Now, another interesting thing about that is that if you add the 33s together, you get 66 at 2029. We know that there are 66 books in the King James Bible. That's very interesting. Now, if you take 1320, which is the last three Shemitahs multiplied, and you take the last three Shemitahs added, which is 33, and you divide them into each other, 33 into 1320, you get the number 40. Well, isn't that interesting? Because from Jesus Christ, as we talked about earlier, to 2029 is 40 jubilees, which is 
40, 50 year cycles, 2000 years, all revealed here in the last 14 years, showing us that we are at that time with all these patterns. So that's the Shemitahs. Yeah. If you just, if you just take the years, okay. If you just take the years, for instance, um, I have a paper here. If you take the two seven years that we are in right here, we have the two seven years, right? 2015 to 2022 is seven. 2022 to 2029 is seven. The last, the two seven year, uh, the seven years of famine, seven years of plenty. Well, if you add them together, you get 14. Okay. So we have 14 years to work with. So one plus four equals five. So we have a 14 and then we get a five from that. So can we make anything of these numbers, any pattern? Well, if you multiply 5 times 14, you get 70. Jerry, why would that make any sense? Yeah. Daniel, why would that week fulfills? Daniel, that's it. After the two 14s, oh my it's God. fulfilled. Daniel, 70, Daniel 73. It's kind of amazing to me. Now, here's another interesting thing to me, is if you take the two last years and you multiply them, seven times seven, you get 49. All right, all right. So what, can we see another 49? Well, if you take the last year in Daniel 73, 2029, and you add it together, 20 plus 29, you get another 49. 49. Wow. Jeez. These numbers are all just coincidence? I don't think so. And it goes back to they the 490 all... years, which you don't take count to zero. It's 49 again, 7 times 7. Yeah. Remember, in Hebrew, you could look at it a different way. You could look at it because Hebrew doesn't use zeros. Right. So that's another way to look at this. Uh, the, so here's an interesting one, Jerry. So remember, we were working with 3773 yes. landing on 2000, 2017. Well, it's interesting to me that if you take 2015 right here and you add it together, which is 20 plus 15, you get a 35, right? So then you take 2020, 2015 added up and you take 2022 and add it up. So 2022 is 42. So you have a 35 and a 42 with the two pivotal points, 2015 and 2022. You have those two numbers. So if you add them together, you get an interesting number, which is 77. 77. That looks familiar, right? 33, uh, 37, 73. So we're getting close, right? right? So now we added those two up. We get it. We added those two up. We got a seventy-seven. Now, here's the final kickoff. You ready for this, Jerry? Yes, I am. If you take the last year, because we have three pivotal years, three points, three shemitas at the last end here. If you take the last year, twenty twenty-nine, and throw it in the mix, you have a forty-nine because twenty plus twenty-nine. Right, 49 times that 77 times 49. Does anybody know what that oh means? Oh my god, you don't. 37, 73. We have another 37, 73. Wow, that's rather amazing! Rather amazing to me. Marking the three points 10th, 11th, and 12th, Smita using the years 2015, 2022, and 2029. You add 35, which is 2015, plus 42, which is 2022 added up, and you get 77. You take And seven, we know seven is a divine number. It uh, means divine completion. So if you take 77, and now for the last ending, you multiply it by 2029, which is a 49, 77 times 49, you get 37, 73 at the end, 
because God declares the end from the beginning because 3773 is the very first verse in the Bible. 2029 is the last year when Jesus Christ comes back. Isaiah 4610, he declares the end from the beginning. Right, so you you minus the zero in 2017. So you got 21 and you got seven. It's without the zero with 2017. But you multiply, you get one one four seven. Now, if you add one forty seven up, one plus four plus seven, you get twelve. Number twelve pointing to the end, which is the twelfth Shemitah. Oh my gosh. And that also means in Hebrew, governmental order. Finished. Now, it's not finished because if you take the 12 and you add the 2 and the 1, you get a 3. Well, why does that matter? Because 3 means divine order, and it's also representing the Godhead. So, not only do you have governmental order, but you have number 3, which is God's governmental order at the end. Holy God, Junior. So, Jerry's talking about recognizing the final 12 years. What about that 12 years of blood, Jerry? Remember that Symbol symbolism? Yeah, there was a story about Jesus where he got off the boat and he went to Jairus. Uh, he got off the boat and Jairus came about his daughter. And his daughter was dying at home and she was 12 years old. And he came to Jesus' feet. So, Jesus now is getting up. He's telling him to get up and let's go. Let's go heal her. But on the way, there was another woman, an older woman, with the issue of blood for 12 years. Well, wait a minute. That's amazing to me because that's showing that at the end, the young and the old will be the 12 tribes being put back together during the tribulation. So, yeah, that too. Mm-hmm. So 12 and 12, where do we get 12 from? So we got we got from 2017 to 2029, we have a 12-year warning. We're to Revelation chapter 12 sign starting it off in 2017. Yes. And then if you go and then if you go backwards, you have another 12. So you have 12 and 12, which is 144. Amazing. Yeah. Now that's interesting to me also because when you have a 144. Let me write this down so everybody can see it. The 144, we all know what that is in the book of Revelation. Well, that adds up to adds up to nine, which is judgment. And that's when Christ comes back. He will judge all nations. Well, Junior, and the 144 will get the rest of the tribes back to God. <laughs> Third mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. Another 144. We know that God declares the end from the beginning, right, Jerry? Right. So we showed how right here at the last 12 years, starting it off with the Revelation 12 sign, we have 144. Well, if God declares the end from the beginning, I should be able to find that number right in the beginning, shouldn't I? You should. How many, how many days of creation were there, Jerry? Six days. Now, how many hours are in a day? 24. Six times twenty-four is one forty-four. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> so he declares the end of the beginning. Four thousand are out. This is That's amazing, right. brother. <laughs> oh my gosh! See oh that? my gosh! <laughs> That's so deep. I love, I love that one. That's the one. That's one of the now, ones I really now, love. That came out of nowhere, Junior. <laughs> sure, God showed me yesterday. Amazing. So, Junior, all this stuff that we're talking about is basically going to come to a halt in 2029. It's all over in 2029, guys. And if there's a pre-tribulation rapture, it's going to happen within the next two months. Oh, my God. 22. 22. Now, let's talk about... The Jubilee. Okay, Jerry, tell me the date that everybody's saying that this 120th Jubilee is going to land on. Tell me that date. October the 5th. October the 5th. Now, how long is the Jubilee, Jerry? 50 years. 
All right, let's 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 look and see if we can make something out of October 5th, which is supposed to be the last jubilee of the 120 year. 120 jubilees. So October is the 10th month in the year, correct? Mm -hmm. And it lands on the 5th. So 10 times 5 just happens to be 50, the jub a jubilee cycle. That's kind of interesting. Yet. So now... What can we make anything even bigger out of that? Can we connect this with something that's so massive? I, I, really just, I just caught something. Yeah, let me show you. Let me show you. Ten plus five is fifteen. Well, the number fifteen equals a one twenty. The reason is is because Jerry showed me a while back. If you had one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine plus ten plus eleven plus twelve plus thirteen plus fourteen plus fifteen. It equals a 120. So, on the 10th month and the 5th day of this year, is going to be a jubilee, 50 years, if you multiply it. Now, if you add it, you get a fifth, you get a 15. Well, which jubilee is this going to be? Well, it's a 15 is a 120. So, is it possible that we're seeing October 5th, which is equals a 50, which is a jubilee and a 120, the 120th jubilee? That's too crazy to me. A fulfillment of Genesis 6 3. That's right. 120 years, 120 jubilees. The number of man is the number six. Okay, in Hebrew, it's the number six. The number of divine completion is seven. The number of man is six. Now, what's interesting about this is that every time you look at and you get a six, usually, not every time, but all, most all, all these patterns with the six. You always get the number nine. <laughs> you can find a nine in there, okay? And the number nine is judgment. So always with the six usually comes the number nine, which is judgment, because man has to be judged. For instance, let me show you guys. What is the number of a man? In Revelation chapter 13, verse 18, it's the number six, six, six. Well, if you add six, six, six up, it's 18. Well, what is 18? 18 is two nines. Nine plus nine. Judgment. A nine is a six flipped upside down. So a lot of times when you see sixes, there's nines around. <laughs> there's judgment. When you see man, there's judgment. There's judgment. There's judgment. And I find that very interesting to me. But we know that 927 equals 18, correct? Right. We'll take it three sixes and turn them upside down. Judgment, judgment, judgment. Adam, what numbers would a six look like upside down three times? Uh, uh, uh. You just said it. A nine. Yeah, nine. Three nines, right? What is three nines? 27. There you go. Two plus seven is judgment beginning on that day at 927. 999 showing the 27. Oh, okay. You see where I'm going? So you could... Yeah, yeah. I'm taking the numbers and I'm turning them upside down. Right, right. And also at a 27, you get two times seven because we got two seven year periods at the end here, 14. Another pattern that we see here in the end is we started 2017 right here because that is the beginning beginning of the 12 year warning. 2015 was the beginning of two seven years, but 2017 is beginning even inside that of the 12 year warning. So when you start out 2017, you go to 2022, which is the the five, right? You have a five in there. And five is the number of grace and the number to be rescued or to be saved, which kind of points to a rapture, kind of, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you go from 2022 to the 2029, you have a seven, which is Daniel's 70th week, right? Right. So you have this five and seven. So you have this five and seven within the twelve-year period. Yes, you do. That is significant, 
Right. So now, now if you go backwards, if you go backwards, you have a five going backwards, which is 2029, which is the end to 2024, which is where the X is marked uh, with the totality, totality eclipse across America. Two pivotal points there. Very good. And if you go from two, now, if you go from 2024, seven years, seven years back to 2017, you have another seven. So you have now you got a placeholder. Ahead. Now you got a placeholder for something I couldn't figure out. I couldn't understand 2024. Right. So you have in the last 12 year period, you have these this five and seven going one way and then five and seven going the other way. Now, if you take these numbers, five times seven is 35 one way and you take it the other way, five and seven, you have another 35. You add them together, you get Daniel's 70th week. And how many and how many weeks are determined for your people, Daniel? Seventy weeks. Seventy weeks. And he'll bring the kingdom and he'll rule on David's throne. How right. perfect is that, Junior? Yeah, now that's not it, because look at this. If you take them and instead of multiplying the fives and the sevens, you add them, five plus seven one way, you get twelve. And you go five plus seven the other way, you get 12. Well, isn't that interesting? Because 12 times 12 is 144. We all know what that number is. Yeah. 144,000 in the book of Revelation. It's 144, which equals nine. <laughs> Right, and then nine, you also get a nine out of the 144, which is judgment. If Jesus is going to judge all nations. Pattern is amazing. Because what did Moses do? Moses, they wanted to kill him, a type and shadow of Christ. And he couldn't take him. He, I mean, he took him, he brought him out of Egypt, brought him in the wilderness, but he couldn't take him into the promised land because of their disbelief. But then they wanted to kill Moses, and then God said, I'm done, I'm gonna kill him. And God, Moses said, no, 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 no. Take my name out of the book. You didn't, did we bring him out of, the, out of Egypt to kill him in the desert? And God says, okay. And look what he does there, Junior, it's mind blowing. What he does there, he says, but I'm gonna take their days and turn them into years, Numbers 14, 34. Well, he took the 40 days and turned them into 40 years. And then God buried Moses and resurrected him. Did not Jesus, did not God do that for Jesus at the first coming? Right. But then Joshua, which is a type and shadow of Christ again, is at the second coming. And he goes through like, you know, stopping the sun, going through the trumpets where the Jericho walls come down, going through the Amicalites. But here's the key. I couldn't understand the 40 what was the 40? And then the Holy Spirit said, it's simple, Jerry. 40 year, 40 jubilees later, which is 2,000 years, I will bring him in the promised land. Well, look at it now this way. Jesus died. And 40 jubilees later, which is 2,000 years, 2029, landing on the same day, August 21st, 2029, from August 21st, 2017, 12 years later, he'll return. And put his feet on the Mount of Olives, Zechariah 14.4. Because what blew my mind, Junior, the sun and the moon went dark from seven sails across America to Jerusalem. Well, I know my God, our God is a God of perfection. Here's the mind blower. If that's the case, Junior, and you put 2,520 days on September 27, 2022, it comes up to August 21st, 2029. It's a 12-year anniversary from the Great Totality Eclipse. That tells me that when the sun went down in Jerusalem is when Matthew 24, 29 says, they asked, what will be the sign of your return? Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the, shall the sun and the moon give up its light? 
they shall fall from the sky and the heavens will be shaking. Then shall the Son of Man be revealed in all his glory. Junior, that's a mind blower to me. This, this whole last 14 years is a mind blower. That's it. I got one that I want to end on, Jerry. Okay, ready? Go for it. You're doing a great job. Thank you. So, what we have here is another really cool pattern. We know that 2029 is the 12th Shemitah, seven year cycle. So, seven years times 12 equals 84. We got an 84 there. Wow. Now, we know that 84 equals 12, which is governmental order. And we know that the 12 equals a 3, which is divine order, which is God's governmental order. And not only that, but I'm, let me throw you for a spin here, is that when you do... God's governmental order, uh, and you times it by itself, 3 times 12 is 36. Well, we know 666 is the number of a man, and Jesus was the son of man and the son of God. So these are all interesting patterns. It's God and man combined. Okay? So it's God and man combined and his governmental order on earth. Kind of amazing, right, Jerry? Absolutely. And Junior, if I'm not mistaken, 84 weeks is it's seven years. years. Right. Because 40 now, is three and a half, correct? Right. Wow, Junior. So we saw how we got an 84 there, which is seven Shemitahs, seven year Shemitah, seven times 12 is the 12 Shemitah. But how else do we land on an 84 there? Well, if you go all the way back to the beginning of the 14 years, which is 2015, you have a 35. The 35 is from 20 plus 15. 2015, you get a 35. Well, if you take the beginning of the seven years, which is a 35, 2015, and you go to the very end of the seven years, which is a 49, because 20 plus 29 is 49, and you add 35 plus 49, you get oh my God. 84. Oh my God. 84. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I didn't see that, Junior. <laughs> I did not see that. That's the whole tamale right there. But something that I wanted to show you guys that's another interesting thing is that the number 10, which starts off the last 14 years because it's the 10th Shemitah, represents in Hebrew the number of wealth. And isn't it interesting that that was the start of the seven years of plenty with the 10 Shemitah, the number of wealth. Wow, Junior. Mm. Wow. Wow. Wow, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you have that seven years of wealth, and then you have, starting in 2022, which is the 11 Shemitah this year, you have the number of chaos because we're going into the seven years of famine. And poverty. The next seven. I have poverty. Yep. And yep. you know what, Junior? I heard a guy say mm. that when they came out of Egypt, they lost their wealth and they went into, uh, are you with me? They were poverty. Mm -hmm. There you go. Because Egypt was left. They plundered everything out of them. So they went to their poverty. At the end, that's... That's so deep, Junior. Yeah. Every so single number. Years are, the seven years are plenty. The seven years of plenty is over in 2022. I'll give you some background about 22. I'm only going to need 2.2 minutes. How about that, Junior, for 22? Sounds good to me. The number 22 is a very pivotal number in the Bible because the Hebrew alphabet has 22 letters. That tells me that Adam and Eve spoke Hebrew. How about it, Junior? Yeah. Yeah. In creation, God created 22 things. One of them was of, them, of himself. Let us make man. The last book of the Bible is the Revelation. The book of Revelation. In how many chapters, Junior? 22. 
from Adam to J Jacob, which is Israel, 22 generations. From Saul to the last king I can't even pronounce is 22. John the Revelator, which was John the Apostle, when he seen John coming, when he seen Jesus coming, he said, light is coming to the world in the Gospel of John. He mentioned it 22 times. And I can go on and on and on and on with these 22s, but I figured that's enough for right now. But let me give you the highlights of the 22. God showed a beautiful picture of giving his son through Abraham and getting him back on the third day on a mountain called Mount Moriah, the, the, the mountain where God will provide. And for three days, Abraham knew he went to go sacrifice his son because he said, we, we, we will go worship. And God did the same picture, but he gives his son back to him on the third day because God himself will provide a lamb on that very mountain. And it was him. How ironic that story is found in Genesis 22. The fulfillment of the shadow and type of God giving his son would be Jesus dying on the cross on that very same mountain. And his last words were quoted out of Psalms 22. Now we've got one left. We know the Father did his part, the Son did his part, the Holy Spirit is next. But the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us, lives in the believer. And what year are we now? 22. So if you do three times 22 for the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, well, that comes up with 66. How many books are in the Bible? 66. And what is 6 plus 6? Well, governmental order. Well, here's one that you can go to bed on tonight because he gave it to me. And I'm not just saying this, but it blew my mind. I know a lot of scripture, but when he told me, well, I'm finding this out a while back ago, not too long ago. He said, Jerry, go to Matthew 22. When I looked at Matthew 22, how ironic Jesus is talking about a wedding. Huh. While I'm reading that, he goes, go to Luke 22. In Luke 22, it states right after the Passover, the devil entered into a man named Judas. Food for thought. Hope for 22. And by the way, we break up 12, 6, and 6. God breaks up 12, 5, and 7 because 5 is the age of grace. And then seven is a fulfillment of God's word. But just think about this one. If that's the case and the grace age is over, well, five years in 2017 would be 2022. And then you've got seven years left, which would bring you to 2029. But here's another one for the record. Think about Revelation 5. When the church is no longer mentioned. But then it takes you in the throne of God. And he's got the scroll in his hand. That when he opens it. Ushers in the seven year tribulation. Five and seven. Twelve from seventeen. A warning to the world. To you. To everybody. To me. So yeah. Twenty nine. He's coming. We're not appointed to the wrath of God. The farthest I think we can we can go would be where would be the right before the abomination that caused desolation before the bold judgment because that is the wrath of God and clearly God says we're not appointed to it. But there could be a possibility that in less than two months on 927 ushering the 11th Shemitah bringing in the Antichrist, being revealed. Paul mentioned about it. John mentions it. Daniel mentions it. Jesus mentioned it. That's right. It's very possible. Well, 22. 22 is also 2 plus 2, which is 4. The word 
the number four means door. Jesus is the door. Take it home, Junior. I'm done. Take it home. God bless you. So 2022, you have a 22, which is four. And four means door in Hebrew. Uh, four is represents the door. And then you also have a 42 in 2022 because 20 plus 22 is 42. Two times four is eight. The number eight is new beginnings and transcendence. Transcendence and new beginnings along with the word door because you have a four there. So that kind of matches up with me, kind of how a rapture would kind of def be defined as a new beginning. You're transcending, right, being changed, and you have to go through the door, which is Jesus Christ. Also from 2017 to 2022, you have, like Jerry said, five years. Now, the number five does mean grace. But, you know, another amazing thing about the number five means it also means to be rescued. Come on. I mean, it's too incredible to me, you know, to be rescued. So, and, and then after there, that, you have. Isn't there a door mentioned in Revelation? Revelation? Revelation chapter four. Everybody get that? Four one, I believe it is. After this, I looked and behold, a door opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, King James Bible. And number 4 is the door. And then you, you said something, Junior, that lined up. Because Genesis 5 is the beginning of the scrolls, correct? Uh, Revelation I mean, 5. 5. Revelation 5. Revelation 5 is the beginning of the scrolls, and the number 5 is to be rescued, to be saved, and also grace. So, so what happens after seven chapters after 5? Then, yeah, so you got the 5 and 7 in Revelation. So after the so once you hit the fifth chapter, which would be there to be rescued, where the scrolls start, then you go seven, because you got five and seven, and you got the Revelation chapter 12 sign in the heavens. Oh, my God, the two perfect rulers. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dude, just just the woman in the sky, a great wonder of beauty in heaven. Oh, my then, God. Uh, that was the warning, yeah, and the warning is up. Because after 20, so I see a 22 in chapter 5, basically year 22 going into 29 at the Revelation 12 sign because that's it. They got to they gotta run. They're, they're in tribulation. They're, that's what it's called Jacob's trouble. Amen? Right. Amos 3, I got it. Amos 3, chapter 7. The Lord surely does nothing without revealing to his prophets, the servants. That's funny, Junior, isn't it? Yeah. 3, chapter 3, verse 7. 37 left to right, 73 right to left. You know, we've been cheated in Christianity. They cheated us. They didn't, maybe because they didn't know. Uh, there's also men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. There are men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That's right, Junior. 3773 is a number that is basically telling us that in 2017 there was a 12 year warning and everything is lining up. And outside of the numbers and outside of the signs and all of that stuff, just look where the world is at today, guys. It's sure lighting up, isn't it, Junior? Yeah, and everybody, you know, that was the beginning warning, the 3773. And we also get a 3773 at 2029. Make sure people know that. He's showing you this last 12 years with the two 3773s because 2029 is a 3773. Remember, if you take the, the Shemitah on 2022, uh, mm -hmm. 7 times 11 is 77. And you times it by 2029, which equals a 49. 20 plus My 29 God. is 49. That's right. There's your 37. Yeah, seven, 
77 times 49 is 3773. And it started the other 3773 was at 2017. God is showing you this last 12 year warning. This last, and that the last, the last 12 years one way and the other way is a 144. So it's right here. And 144 is judgment because four, one plus four plus four is nine, and that's judgment. So judgment is coming to the world, man. And then that's also the first verse in the Bible is 3773. That's what it adds up to. So guess what? This is what the churches need to be talking about, and they're not talking about. We know that Jesus is our king. We know that he's defeated the enemy. We know that he's got a plan. He's on the throne. But we also need to know who we are in him that we're not condemned and that we also need to know what time is it current truth that's right so and the, and i don't see that junior i don't see that in a lot of churches i seen yesterday people sunday they were all come to the altar let's pray on you let's put oil on you and ask you for, for your forgiveness really 30 year christians nah damn Nah, 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 nah. Run out of that church. They're a form of godliness denying the power to have. They're not telling people what time is it, what's going on in the world, what's going to happen maybe if they're maybe left behind because they didn't trust the gospel for what he did. And all these numbers, Junior, are about a Shemitah, the seven-year cycles, and that's how he, that, well, he didn't stop the clock. He multiplied the clock, Junior. And that's another story we'll do later, but he multiplied the clock just like he did the first time. Right. Because you could actually go, Junior, to was it October? He went, 40, he went 40 days to 40 years with the Israelites, right? Right. And then from the second time when they fell in Romans chapter 11, 11, and salvation came to the Gentiles, he went from 40 years to 40 jubilees to where we're at today. And is it funny that at 30 AD, he warned them at the Mount Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24, and 40 years later, they were driven out by the Romans, and they were dispersed till this day, till 1948. And he said that, learned the parable of the fig tree, 70 to 80, Junior, well, check this out. 73. We're at the tip of 73. In 49. 73. 73. There's a 73. 37. 37. 73. That's right, Junior. The 73rd year, Junior. And 1949 <laughs> is 2022. You know what's the ironic thing about it, Junior? He spoke about it during the Mount Olivet Discourse, which was a seven-year tribulation. So, yeah, there very well could be <laughs> a tribulation, or a, a rapture. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, Yea, the deep things of God.